Well, hello there. I have finally came back after my month break. My wrist still hurts, so don't expect any crazy edits that I'm going to do this year. And what better way to come back is by making a video on Ruin DLC. I didn't love it. Now, that's not to say that I hate it or anything. There's stuff I like about this game and how it's pretty much better than Security Breach. And I don't even hate that game, I just think it's meh at best. But the thing is... I expected Rowan to do some stuff that the base game couldn't do in the first place. And while they kinda did that, they unfortunately didn't do the important stuff that I waited for them to do. And a lot of people loved this DLC. Even the people that hated Security Breach loved it too. And that's cool for them. Hell, during when I was playing the DLC, I had a good time with it. But after I got all of the endings, I felt lost and confused at the same time. And I hope you understand why. Also, please don't start heated arguments in the comment section. I'm just some guy on the internet. Please don't be rash, okay? Okay. Anyway, here's the stuff I liked about the DLC. It looks amazing. I love how completely ruined <laughs> Get it? the entire Pizza Plex is. I have always thought of the idea of an abandoned mall horror game as a fascinating idea for me. Not only because of that fake for a free trailer that had that premise, but also because there's a huge abandoned mall that exists in my country, and it always fascinated me as a kid. Security Breach did this premise fine in my opinion, but Rowan goes all out of it and it's great. I also liked how the game looked when you put on the Vanny mask, especially with that one cutscene where Cassie goes through a huge downward spiral and at the end of it Mix's face shows up as she goes back to reality. Up oh, there goes gravity. That moment has stuck with me since I played the DLC. The tone of Ruin is completely different from the base game. Instead of it being colorful and the areas being wide, the Betaplex is dark and some areas have become claustrophobic. And the DLC is a lot more scarier than the base game. Though I would be lying if I said that Security Breach didn't scare me at times. Like I was more scared of this game than Resident Evil 5 and 6. It's almost as like these two games didn't fucking try to be scary in the first place. Speaking of the scares, I like the new jump scares. Instead of following the tradition of every FNAF game having the same animatronic screaming at you type jump scare, they do something different for the first time. We all can agree that Monty's jump scare is the best one in the entire franchise. I'm just kidding, this one is better. <laughs> The Glamrock animatronics have been destroyed to shit. Like how did Monty go from this to this? My god, what the fuck did you do to them, you fucking psycho? They don't have that much screen time in the game, and they do give it at all with the weakest one being Glamrock Chica. And the most enemy that got the most screen time has to be Mix. This thing is pretty much what I wanted Fanny and Burnt Up to be. Menacing and cool as fuck at the same time, while also being a legitimate threat to you in the entire DLC. He only shows up if you put on the mask for too long, and it would be a pretty bad situation if you try to avoid this cunt, all the while needing the mask to go through stuff while one of the Glamrocks is trying to kill you. I swear this happened to me a lot. And guess what? All of the staff bots are dead. We fucking won, baby! I also should mention that the AI isn't that bad. Instead of the AI being a hit or miss in the base game, they were pretty good on my playthrough, and I'm surprised that there weren't many bugs in the final DLC. There's still some, but I will get to that later. The gameplay is fine too. The Vanny Mask is a fucking insane of a mechanic. Not only you can go through some stuff to progress, but also you can fucking teleport while using the mask. What wizard shit is this? No wonder why Fanny became a killer. You can also use the mask to complete puzzles. Now don't worry, they are not like Mercer sites. Thank the lord. They are more so just simple puzzles. And they are fine, though they get a little repetitive the more you play. And hot take, I guess. But Cassie is the best FNAF protagonist in the whole series. She has more depth in this DLC than Gregory in the base game, especially with her connection with Gregory and Roxy. And I like what they did to her in this DLC. <laughs> Got crushed by an elevator. What a great start. That was too close. I was almost a Cassie sandwich. <laughs> You're right. The scene of Cassie trying to reset Roxy to save Gregory is the highlight of the DLC. It's not the most heartbreaking thing I have ever seen, but they sure are trying. Not only Roxy recognizes Cassie from a birthday they did to her in the pizza plex, but after Cassie reboots her, some crazy ass at Steelworld said, Hey, let's make her cry while she's about to save Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Is this some kind of sick joke? Yeah. And then you remember that Cassie is a big fan of Roxy. And she even did her makeup that looks similar to Roxy's makeup. They just wanna stick that shit into your heartstrings. And oh wow, how nice is it to see that you can do dark stuff in this franchise and not try to make it edgy and disgusting just for the sake of it. I know that's... That's crazy to think about. Then there's Glamrock Bonnie, who was hinted at the base game and now we see that Monty has indeed replaced Glamrock Bonnie. Also he's gay. Oh my god! That's not a joke by the way, that Bonnie is the queerest character in the whole series. Not only he has merchandise of Glamrock Freddy on his desk, but also he has a poster of Glamrock Freddy that says you and me forever and ever love Freddy. Do you know what this means? These two canonically fu- And don't worry guys, you can still play the Monty Golf minigame. Gaming is truly safe. So that is all the positive stuff I have to say about Ruin, which you can realize that it's a lot. And now you are questioning, why do I not love it? Well... There are a few bugs in this DLC. Now I played this on the PS4 and I had like 3 crashes. 2 crashes when I died at respawn, and 1 crash happened when I was at Bonnie's Ball. Thank god they gave an autosave for it unlike Security Breach. Actually every game needs an autosave. I don't understand why some games refuse to add it. These were rare by the way, so at least they weren't common. The frame rate is inconsistent, but it wasn't as aggressive as it was at the Security Breach launch. It just goes from 60 FPS to 30 FPS from time to time. And then you have the loading being very long for some reason. Every time I die and try to respawn, it takes like what feels like 2 minutes of the loading screen. I have no clue as to why that happened. Unless this is just an Amimus Blue reference, I don't know. There were other different bugs that happened to other players, but mine was just mild and thankfully it didn't affect the whole game. And here's the real reason why I didn't love this game. Other Security Breach characters don't show up in this DLC at all. Vanessa? Well, we see a recording of her chasing Gregory and that's it. Glamrock Freddy? He's not here. Instead we have a broken down prototype of Glamrock Freddy with a sick opening stomach mouth, but that's about it. DJ Music Man! He wasn't even seen. Instead we have these small DJ Music Man on Bonnie's ball. Map bot? He turned himself into a mask bot. So Ray was kinda like about what he said. The blob? He shows up for like one second. This does mean that Stewell hasn't forgot about them, so that's something. Burn trap? Oh, Bob. You guys need to sit down for this one. So the plot for this game is that Cassie goes into the pizza plex because Gregory told her to come here and save him from under the pizza plex. However, when we finally get there, it turns out that it wasn't Gregory this whole time. But instead, Burntrap uses his voice to manipulate Cassie into coming here and set him free. Or as he's called, the Mimic. You see, Mimic was a character that came from one of the Tales of the Pizza Plex books named Tiger Rock. And this book came out before Ruin was released. A lot of fans have connected the Mimic from the books to Burn Trap as they have similarities to each other, instead of Burn Trap being a resurrected corpse of William Afton. Now, the books being connected to the official FNAF games are a whole can of forms that I don't want to get into, especially when I have never read any of these books in the first place. And the whole Mimic stuff has led to FNAF 6 fans having a mental breakdown on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean X. Man, what the fuck is Elon doing to that website? And started acting like a bunch of assholes towards Security Breach fans. And it's only because they wanted the series to end at FNAF 6. Look, I get that ending is a perfect way to end the series. But that doesn't give you the shitty excuse of acting like a dumbass baby towards people that love modern FNAF. Okay? 
okay. And all that being said, I like the way they use this concept, and you don't really need to read the books to understand this, because it has been foreshadowed throughout the DLC. For one, before you reach the end, you can hear Gregory's voice being inconsistent. Finally have a clear signal! Gregory, I shut down all the security nodes. I'm in the Roxy party garage. Am I close? Almost. There's still one node left that's keeping the underground sealed. Where? Roxy's the final node. You need to deactivate her. But... Deactivate her. Save me. Save me, Cassie. Please. It's so dark down here. It's pretty much the mimic using samples of Gregory's voice, and he even uses one from the base game. What are you? I... I... Gregory. I... I'm... Gregory. And this also proves that Gregory didn't betray Cassie at the end of Ruin, because there's a random chance in the game where this happens. Second, Mexis turns out that he's trying to stop Cassie from helping the Mimic escape. The Mexis security program was designed to keep it hidden, but you shut down the security. Thirdly, when we hear broken down Candy Cadet's story, it seemed to be a metaphor for Cassie and the Mimic. Now I will tell you a story about a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods. There was a monster in the woods. But the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement. The monster always made scary noises at night. But the mother would tell the boy not to worry because it could never get out. Then she would sing the boy a lullaby to sleep. One day, the monster stopped prowling and instead listened and learned the lullaby. The next day, the mother went out to find food. The monster sang the lullaby from the basement. The little boy heard the lullaby and opened the door. door. <laughs> At first I was more optimistic about this whole mimic being burnt harp theory back when Rowan hasn't come out, but after I have seen these evidence, I have become a mimic believer. Though I wonder where did he get that flesh? Like how the f- And man, I wonder how they would handle the rest of the DLC after witnessing this moment in the game, it just ends. See now that's some bullshit. After the chase scene and the elevator going down, it ends with no proper conclusion at all. This whole build up to the mimic ending on a cliffhanger is the strangest fucking decision I have ever seen. Why we couldn't have like a boss fight and more stuff to explain rather than just end it like this? This is not how you do it and the other endings don't give it much either. The Good ending is Cassie going into a cave that has a fretbear cutout for some reason and puts on the mask as she sees this. I'm okay. I found a spot to hide. What? So this implies that the Princess Quest ending is the canon ending. This was hinted at before, with the music from Princess Quest being played in the spiral scene. And after the Cassie gets out of it, you can see the sword from the minigame being placed on Fanny's secret room. Vanessa even has the same purple clothes from the ending. However, it's not really a satisfying ending because it just fucking ends. What the hell? And then you have the secret ending, where after you find secret cameras in specific camera placements, you get the mimic wearing a furry costume, and leads to a cutscene where Cassie scoops the mimic, and... It ends! Why? This is the reason why I felt lost and confused after beating the DLC. What was Scott and Seawall's decision behind this? I felt like I missed something because what's the whole criticism about security breach endings is that they left people confused? So why do it again? Endings are a very important thing for storytelling. If the ending is good, it would be the most satisfying conclusion you have ever seen and leaves you feeling something at the end of the day. But if the ending is bad, or leaves the conclusion on an unsatisfying find cliffhanger, it would kinda ruin the whole experience and makes you feel hollow and confused. And that's what I felt about these endings and to be honest, I wish it didn't have to. Now, 
I should mention the elephant in the room, that being help wanted too. It is coming out in a few months and it does have a connection with security breach and ruin, so maybe this game could change my mind on the endings. Though I'm not gonna play it because I don't have a PlayStation VR 2 and a PlayStation 5 in general. Haha, <laughs> I'm broke. Sorry bro, I'd rather spend my money on Roxy's statue so I can talk about my feelings than buy shit that costs the average New York apartment rent. I seriously didn't intend to make a video about Ruin in the first place, but I felt like explaining myself as to why I don't love this DLC instead of talking about it on a game review site. I'm confused as to what even happened with Steel and Scott behind the scenes with modern FNAF stuff. There seemed to be a problem going on that we don't even know about it, especially with the release of Security Breach. You could argue that they were over ambitious when they were working on Security Breach, but it doesn't feel like that with Ruin, and the fact that it ended like this tells me that there's something wrong going on behind the scenes. Don't take this as a fact by the way, as I don't work at Steel. I hope that FNAF fans don't tear me to shreds after I upload this video. If you love this DLC, DLC, then cool. If you don't, then cool. At the end of the day, this is a fine DLC with a very disappointing conclusion. So yeah, Security Beach with Ruin, 6 out of 10. They sure are better than FNAF 2. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay.